uh, people that I've given Reiki to that uh, that went to the doctor and the doctor didn't see anything uh, after having seen something in a test and then they say well, it went away. We don't, you know. Yeah, it's so miraculous. I do believe that it that these energies definitely are. They definitely do work. Oh, there's no question about it. And there can be many different things uh, esoterically that can cause heart challenges. And over the years, I've discovered maybe six or eight different things to do that can correct these challenges. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's great because, you know, if, if um, these, these uh, <clears throat> holistic means and, 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 and means that, that you don't have to use a, a, a knife to cut somebody or something like that, that if, you know, it might be the trend of the future. Who knows? Oh, I know. I've always believed that. Did you ever see Star Trek where they put that thing on the guy's head and it goes, Zzz, and the person's good again? <laughs> or how about that a movie, uh, what was it, The End of Time, or I don't know, where um, Man from the Future came back and he had this robot. Anyway, he, he was shot and he was killed, and they, his robot picked him up and put him on the table, and they just sent some energy into him, and he came back to life. Right. <laughs> I believe this is our future, honestly. It could be. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right about that. <laughs> well, at least we want to be in good health while we're alive, right? That's true. We want to be the, in the quality best of life is, is the important thing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And there, I mean, just through using these different techniques, I've had diabetics no longer be diabetic. I've had cancer remissions, you know, all different types of things that you can't even imagine that just miraculously disappear. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. So um, the other thing that we were going to talk about and how this all, and you said it all tied together, auras with energy medicine in 2012. Now we have 2012 coming up. Here we are almost to the middle of 2010. And a lot of people have been uh, very, very uh, concerned about what, what are we going to expect in 2012. Some people think it's going to be the end of the world and an Armageddon or something, and I don't think that's the case. I don't think so either. No. And, uh, you know, but we have heard that um, Nostradamus and Edgar Cayce and the Mayan calendar all end at the end of 2012. They, neither, none of these um, uh, people or, uh, or the Mayans or, or the, uh, you know, Edgar Cayce or uh, Nostradamus have uh, seen anything past December 21st of 2012. Now, what does that mean? Well, I think that time will end for starters in 2012. In a meditation during an earth, uh, a planetary earth healing, I actually saw time being swallowed by the earth's prana tube. And I said, what does that mean? And they were telling me that is what is to come, that time will cease. Uh, but almost every religion, every culture has some scenario, the exact same scenario or the potentials that the Book of Revelation had, that uh, Nostradamus had, and how can that be? It, every single culture and race, if it's not somewhat true. But you know, it's actually only a possibility, the apocalypse. And I think we've gone past that already. Yeah. Enough light workers around the world uh, who have assisted to change that potential. And, um, and I, I know one of the major things that people don't understand about 2012 is that the reason they think it's the end of the world besides what was written in the book of Revelation is that there's an expected pole shift where which has happened like with the ice age and with the flood and so forth and it's happened many times throughout uh, the history of mankind but in order to do that the earth kind of has to go like this well over actually I actually think that since the harmonic Concordance in 1987, light workers have been working to prevent that from happening. And I know that weekly, the Yatuve practitioners, we join together and we actually shift the earth little by little and actually repair the earth so that the earth doesn't go like this. It's shifting little by little by little, and we're almost there. So I know that there's no, not going to be a pole shift. Uh huh. I, I know that for fact. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, that is not going to happen. So, um, but the reason that the energy medicine and the auras line in and that it's so important is because as the earth is um, going higher, which we're going into the fifth dimension, 
So what that means is that the frequency and the vibration is much higher, very high. So you have to make sure that your auras are prepared, repaired, and in the best possible shape because um, otherwise those that are frail will not be able to withstand the increase in pressure and vibration. So the goal is, is to repair the aura through energy medicine and build it so that as the frequency rises that your system can take it. I see. It's almost like being in a pressure cooker. Ah where you know you're getting that extra pressure yeah and um and a lot of people who haven't cleared done the energy work to clear their blocks and their traumas they're all being pushed to the surface now for clearing and so uh, people are experiencing all kind of emotional and mental outburst because it's coming up so quickly hmm. i'm sure you see it in the news every day oh sure we see all kinds of things in the news every day and sometimes you don't even want to be paying attention to it because it's sometimes it's such a brain down. Oh, I know. So the goal is if you do it via energy medicine little by little on your time instead of having it forced out as the energy rises, it's more copacetic and much easier to, to handle. So how do we do that with uh, meditation? What You can do meditation, you can do Reiki, you can um, take Epsom salt baths with two cups to a tub of water with bubbles because the bubbles grab the negative energy and really? the salt dissolves it, but you have to stay in the tub at least 20 minutes. So tell me now, you put the Epsom salts and but 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 Epsom salt doesn't make bubbles, so you no. have to add bubble bath. Right, you, or doesn't you matter shampoo. what kind. No, I just put shampoo in there and a couple of cups. And if I recommend everybody does this at least twice a week, because as you sit in there, those negative energies that are being pushed up yeah. get grabbed by the bubbles, and uh -huh. then the salt dissolves it and it goes down the drain. Wow. So that will really really help. So do you actually get out of the tub feeling? Um, more uh, positive, more you relaxed. Bet, yeah. I know the Epsom salt will relax you. Yes, oh my God. You I, get a good night's sleep after a hot Epsom salt bath. I feel about 100 tons lighter after I get out of a tub. Uh huh, uh huh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so you um, do that twice a week, you say? I would say twice a week and um, minimally, you know what I mean? Every, if you want to do it every day, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> right. So in other words, then uh, having done this, this uh, routine with the uh, Epsom salt and bubble bath, um, uh, you'll be in a different position then come 20, 2012 where you'll be able to handle better what's happening. Well, you'll be able to handle it better now. Uh -huh. You still need to do the repairs to your electromagnetic body, which is the reason this book was written, so that people can actually do it on themselves because many people don't know about it. So this way they can actually get it for $19.99, buy it, do it to themselves with the help of God, uh -huh. and, um, and then it's it, they're building their electromagnetic body, they're repairing their aura, they're creating that. Um, because still some people think that energy medicine like Reiki and, and these other ones, almost like it's voodoo or something. So we have to there make- There are people who look at it that way, yeah. especially people who consider themselves very religious. But yet look at this, laying on in the hands in the churches have been around for forever. That's right. That's forever, right. so I don't understand why they think it's voodoo, but um, at, at least this way it's in prayer, so yeah. they feel safe, yeah. and they can do it themselves, so they're not worried about some voodoo witch doctor doing something to them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, so it can be global instead of just, uh, you know, a small percentage of people being able to be healed. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. So when, uh, now you're saying about time is going to go away. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that's, that's linear time as we know it. Well, I know it's hard to conceptualize. I remember when I first started thinking about there being the past, present, and future are all one and the same, uh -huh. but they're actually all happening at the same time. They are. They are. And I, uh, when I looked at it psychically, I almost see it like a cylinder like this like a tube and it's rotating, but they're, they're all lined up. It's just a different timeline. So that's why you have to be careful even talking about your past because it's still happening in another, another place. Even the past of this life? Mm-hmm. Just that's, that's like uh, when somebody goes into a haunted place and um, a ghost is reliving how they died. 
over and over and over, over again. And over, yes. How sad for them. You know, that's why it's a blessing. That's another thing I do. I do house clearings um, along with feng shui uh, because there's so many people that are stuck here in this plane. And when you clear the house, they go to God. Now, I know some people, I, I've heard preachers and other um, practitioners at times send them to the barren places, but no, you don't send them to the barren places, you send them to God. Yeah, right. They're stuck here, send them to God. Yeah, right, I mean, unless they're, they're an evil spirit that, that has to be, you know, blocked out altogether. Well, they go to God, he'll take care of that. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So. So let's see now, uh, come, come 2012, how do we expect things to be? How will we feel? How, what kind of life will be we be living? Well, I truly believe that this is what is going to usher in the thousand years of peace that uh, have been prophesied in the Bible. I do believe that. And I'll tell you why, because I know for a fact this is what's going to happen. God is sending through cosmic bombardments, attunements, on a weekly, monthly basis. It started... I don't know, a while back, but now it's really exhilarated. So either the evil people that exist on the planet, mm -hmm. they're either transformed or they will not be able to survive. So you're saying that, let's say for instance, for example, <clears throat> uh, the people that are trying to, uh, the terrorists, mm -hmm. let's say as an example, they, they would like to be able to kill as many people as they can that are not of, of their beliefs. Right. Now these people will disappear? Well, two thi there's a couple of things that can happen. Remember we talked about red being the lowest energy yes, yes. Um, in the chakra system uh -huh. as we know it? Um, well, let's say they're red, okay? Now as the energy is, is being sent to earth by God for this um, ascension process, it is rising the vibration, so people's colors are starting to change to a higher color. So in other words, they're going upward through the chakras. People that were red might now be yellow or green, and hopefully they'll get the pink or purple or white, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if that doesn't happen, um, if a person insists upon they can't change their mindset and they want to be evil, they're not going to be able to survive because it's almost the analogy of if we were an appliance, let's say you're a washer machine and you're 110, but you need, but you need to be 100, uh, 220. So if, oh, you mean volts. It volts. Right. So now if you plug that in to a 220, which is where we're going, we need to be a 220 instead of a 110, Right. it's going to blow up or right. it's short out, right? right? Well, this is kind of the way it's going to happen mm. for them too. So either they transform or, or, they, they're out. Or, or they're out. So that's how we're going to come into the thousand years of peace. So in other words, all these people that would see others die at their hands over what they feel is their beliefs will, will disappear. They'll either disappear or they or will they'll, transform. They'll, in other words, they'll, they'll wake up and see the light. Right. And people are starting to awaken. <clears throat> I have noticed such a difference. Five years ago when we would see the auras, um, do you know about the yin yang? Yin yang, yes. Okay, now that's represented by that black and white circle with the little squiggle. Right. Well, when we would see that in someone's aura, it was totally out of balance, like this. Really? Now, almost everybody's like this. They're really? even. And you need to be even. You need to be even because that's the balance of the male and the female. Uh huh. And it has to do with, um, in the Gospel of Thomas, it said, when the male is like the female and the female is like the male is when you can reach the gates of heaven. Wow. Yeah. So that is when you can co-create. Co-create for your own life with, with, uh, with God. Mm-hmm. I see. When you reach that level. Wow. And I actually have a technique called yin-yang balancing that actually brings that male-female into balance because it's not only the male, the female. It's the light versus the dark. It's the thought versus compassion. So it has many components to it, but right now the divine feminine is coming to the fore because it's been a patriarchal society for so long and now there's gonna be equality. And that's just not only um, for the women, it's for the men too. Men will develop their softer side and, and have their feminine side balanced. Mm -hmm. And women will also have their masculine side come to the fore and have that balanced. Wow. 
So in other words, people are changing. People are changing dramatically. I was thrilled when I saw the aura pictures so, because sometimes there's a, a, a lapse around the holidays and in the winter season where nobody wants to do any events or anything. So I didn't pull out the equipment for a couple of months. And when we saw at the last expo, I was thrilled with what I saw with the auras. So from one year to the next, a lot of changes were made. Yeah, because year after year, we do many of the same events, so we know the people, and some of them will even bring their aura photos so we can compare them. Really? And I'll say, well, what color were you last year? And they'll say, I was orange last year. Oh, wow, well, you're green this year. You've really taken a big leap forward. Uh-huh. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So then, um, so then you feel that, that that almost on a daily basis, then people are changing and uh, people are getting more toward the spiritual and they're getting more, having more understanding of why we're here and what our purpose is and all that stuff. Many people are awakening. In the past uh, year, the events that we've done, we've seen a lot of first timers, people that don't know anything about anything on a spiritual basis or a mind, body, spirit basis. And suddenly they're drawn to the mind, body, spirit expos. And I spend more time with those people because they don't know anything about this. So I want to educate them. Um, and a lot of them say, gee, what's this all about? I, I'd, I've never seen this. Mm -hmm. And so you find out that maybe 50% of the people are first timers. Wow. Yeah. So people are starting to awaken. Yeah, they're starting to look around and say, well, you know what, they see 2012 coming, they're saying maybe we should be doing something that's going to save us in some way. Well, I think that movie did wake a lot of people up. It, it woke them up, it scared them, and then they started doing some research uh -huh. and started to weigh things and, and start to say, oh, what's this all about? Well, it's a good thing, because I think that's probably the way it's supposed to go now. Oh, I agree. Definitely. You know, and I think it's all in God's plan. I think it was p planned from the beginning that he created mankind. Really? I do. I think every minute has been planned, every second, nothing has been left untouched, undone. Really? Good, bad, or indifferent, huh? Well, I think it's been planned because remember, he told me that astrology were his numbers, his mathematical numbers. So what that means is since astrology is planned and we know the scientific um, approach and how it has a certain path and a certain cycle. And so as these things go into their cycle, it's ordained, it's, it's destiny. Do you think that come 2012, there's going to be um, shortages of um, food and, and uh, other uh, you know, things and that, that, that cost of things are going, is going to be really high or what do you think about that? Well, I think there's going to be some chaos involved as we um, get used to new things happening and so forth. And I do think it might be good to have a little backup. But you know what? I used to worry about that, but I don't anymore. Um, so I can see that I've reached a different level. But I also think that as our vibration gets higher, as we get closer to 2012, I really don't think we're even going to need to eat as much food. Yeah. Even right now, I find myself eating less, mm -hmm. and eating more more wholesome food. Um, Being attracted to the healthier foods? Yeah, more vegetables uh -huh. and more fresh food like that, that you right. don't want to eat anything processed right. type thing. And I think a lot of people are feeling that way. Yeah, I've been getting away, not, not totally. I mean, I still get some processed things for when I'm in a hurry. But, um, but yeah, by and large, you're trying to eat a little healthier, not, not eat the fried foods, eat the grilled foods and all that kind of stuff. Do, have you ever heard of anybody who, who didn't eat for a really long time, but they, they just drank water and lived by the rays of the sun? No, I never heard it, and I know I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, you know, um, I have heard of this at least 10 times. Really? And I've never met someone, but I've known, like, I, I know you, you have a friend, who has done this and go on six months with no food but water by the sun. I do? No, I'm saying that I know someone who knew someone. Oh, just, I see. Yeah, like that, I see. a friend of a friend. And oh, I, see. Um, I think that as our bodies um, uh, raise in vibration, we won't need nearly as much food and I don't think it will be nearly the same issue we think it is now. Oh yeah? Yeah, because we're really kind of like plants and we can live off the sun, not that I do it, mm -hmm. but I do suspect that as we go, that's what I've been told, as we go along, we will not need as much food. Well, the sun gives us certain vitamins and things. Yeah. 
And so, you know, I think that when we've had a lot of people telling you to stay out of the sun and put on the sunblock, I think that was a bunch of baloney because we really need that sun. Well, to a certain extent, I guess we can overdo it too. True, that's true. If yeah. you get sunburn, I right. mean, that's not a good thing, but right. the sun generally gives you the energy you need to live. It, it recharges you. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So then, um, so then come 2012, you think that we'll be okay then? Mm-hmm. And, and now this thousand years of peace that you talk about, that's going to come right after 2012 or? Well, you know, we may even be ahead of schedule. We've been really moving along pretty quickly and um, we don't, I mean, the date, December 21st, 2012 may not even be true at this moment because every day everything shifts again. So what we even say now may shift tomorrow. We may even be ahead of schedule. And But also, um, it may also be, if they don't move it ahead of schedule, that it's going to be at the equinox, the spring equinox of 2013 is a possibility. And that will start the supposedly thousand years of well, I think it's going to be gradual. Yeah. In between now and then, I, I think mean, there's going to be great changes. I do yeah. think there's going to be great changes. Because we still have a war that we're fighting right now. And you think that's going to come to an end at that point? It has to at some point. Because every, as the energies keep coming in, you have no, there's nothing you can do except raise in vibration or, or die. It's, or, you know, you either transform or you don't make it. Uh-huh. And that goes for everybody. Everybody. Nobody is immune to this. So then, then there's going to come a time when you feel that, um, that corruption and uh, terrorism and war and all these negative things that affect our lives today will come to an end. Absolutely. And we will see it in our lifetime. I think absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this is a wonderful time to be alive to see these changes that are going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you ever heard that uh, or, or have read the Bible where it talked about there's 144,000 masters that came into earth to help. Well, that's what all the light workers are. Right. Right? And we're among them. And we're among them. And we may even be them. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And we don't know. <laughs> and we don't know. Or we do know. <laughs> so, you know, we have a lot of help. And um, I think it will be in our lifetime. And I'm looking forward to living in a time frame where everybody is nice and sweet to each other and works together. Oh, I'd love to see that, too. Yeah. Right after 9-11, that's the way we were. Okay, <clears throat> everybody was in such shock that, that, that someone would have the nerve to attack us on our own soil in that way that, that we decided, we, we all I think had some kind of an awakening. I really do, I think we had some kind of an awakening for a while, for a good long time. I remember people were more apt to, you know, be more courteous to you on the road. They'd let you go, you'd let them go. Uh, people were waving at each other, <laughs> American flags all over the place. And I think that we kind of got away from that a little bit right now. I mean, I'm, when I drive, when I'm out there driving, I still see, you know, people that <clears throat> will let me, will give me a break and I'll give other people a break and stuff like that. But it's not too often. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that are still riding around like they're oblivious. They're, they're the only people on the road or something, you know? I know. I think it has a lot to do with that energy pushing up all that angst, all that fear and anger and it's just coming up and people don't have control of that. Yeah, I think that has a bit to do with it. But then again, look on the other hand at what happened with Haiti and all these other earthquakes that people were rushing in from all over the world, including other countries to help. So, I mean, that's kind of new, isn't it? Yeah. So, and we can continue to see um, some land changes which are being mitigated greatly by the work that the light workers are doing. Uh, otherwise, we would have had, we could have had the potential to have that type of scenarios that, uh, of the apocalypse, but because of that, we're not. You know, and so instead of losing um, Hawaii, for instance, uh, the tsunami never hit. Oh, and I have a, a little story to tell you about that. Okay, go ahead. Um, well, um, we had heard that it was inevitable that Hawaii was going to get hit by that tsunami. Yeah. So 
I put together a prayer video and I sent it out on my downline. Everybody sent it out on their downline. And the next thing you know, we had thousands of people praying across the world. For Hawaii. For Hawaii. Guess that tsunami never hit, did it? Wow. And well, you, the power of prayer. Oh, yeah, the power of prayer, right? Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, and I want to say that anybody, anytime you see a... Um, um, you hear of some type of thing like that, like a tornado coming, a hurricane coming, an earthquake, you can go to my website and it's there and it's called the end of times prayer. And you can just pray along with that prayer and it will mitigate it and transmute it with the help of, of the heavens. Once again, at the end of the show, there will be a, a page with all of uh, Adolfina's uh, information on it. So if you want to do that, just have a pen and paper ready in a couple of minutes and you'll be able to jot it down, go to her website, see what her book is about and see uh, the prayer that she just talked about. Yeah, because I do expect that we will have a little bit more land changes coming, so this will be, would be handy. So you think there's going to be more disasters then like that? Of course, it has to because the earth is raising from its position in the heavens and it's got to, as it shifts, have something going. You know what I mean? It's, I don't think it can be seamless. So you think that, that these disasters will end after all this when we have a thousand years of peace, there won't be any more volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc.? I think that will be the end of it. You think so? Once we're in position where we're supposed to be at the galactic center, the center of the, the universe, I think all of that will have ended. And you think that mankind will be living in peace then? Absolutely. The lamb will lay down with the lion. Well, that'll be a wonderful thing to see, and I'm glad we're here to see it. And I'm very, very glad that you came to give us all of this wonderful information. It's been such an interesting well, thank show. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I'm thank sure you. our audience has learned quite a bit from you. I mean, I'm fascinated. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so, and I want to just say thank you for coming, and, and we do appreciate you. And uh, maybe sometime we'll... We'll do another show sometime. Okay, down and I, I would enjoy that. I've enjoyed this show. I've enjoyed you. you on the show, and thank <laughs> you for being here. And everybody, I hope you've enjoyed the show, and have a good night.